Hi guys, it's Ben from Heirloom Pianos. Um, we're doing a bit of piano recycling this morning, so I thought I'd take the time to quickly talk about uh, cast iron plates and frames and pianos. Now this is a three-quarter plate, and what that means is that if you look at the top of it, you'll see that the actual plate itself is uh, stops just before the pin block. So I'll show you some pictures of a standard plate um, in the video versus a three-quarter plate. But this is an older style of construction where the tension or the actual sort of uh, structural integrity of the plate basically just holds from the speaking length of the string down to the hitch pins. Um, cast iron plates or plates are made out of cast iron. Uh, the main reasons for this is it's a very easy um, metal to mould. It's also uh, very cheap to make and acoustically it's completely dead. So in terms of resonance there isn't really a lot from the metal. Um, some manufacturers in the 60s and 70s experimented with aluminium plates but the issues with them were that they weren't quite as robust and also they can resonate and they're a lot more expensive to make in terms of manufacturing. Um, so in terms of how these are made and the vernacular, so sometimes the cast iron plate is called a harp and you can see that quite easily just by looking at the shape and the construction. And these are usually made in a mould, so you'll have a sandbox style of iron sands and a shape will be pushed into that and then subsequently um, the molten cast iron will be poured into that shape, left to cool, and then this will uh, basically be ready to um, ready to use and paint. As you can see, because no one actually sees the inside of the piano, there's quite often a number of um, minor paint flaws, which are pretty common just because it's something that's very well concealed. Um, the plates in modern pianos tend to be a lot more substantial. So this is from a 1900s overdamper. Um, it's still very heavy, um, but it is not quite as substantial as a modern piano. And that makes these older style of instruments not quite as uh, stable in terms of tuning. So the plate is designed to take the full weight of the strings being pulled horizontally, or vertically I should say, and in some cases that's up to 15 to 25 tonnes of string tension pulling this way. So obviously it's a very, very hard, very sturdy structure. And these are the hitch pins. So these are pins that are drilled in and then tapped into the plate itself. And then subsequently we have some pins up here and these two are these are to space the uh, base strings here and this is just a essentially what we call a V bar so you can see that the bar is in the shape of a V and this is basically the point at which the strings uh, rest on the plate and you can see here from these little marks that these were tricords and they've obviously dug in over time now today we're going to be recycling this. These are not reusable because um, this plate is specific to the scale of piano. So you can see here there's a certain number of treble, a certain number of tenor, and then a certain number of bass strings, um, but they are recyclable. So we'll break them into a few little pieces now and we'll, uh, we'll take it to the scrap metal dealer. All right, so just to survey the damage, as you can see, this is very brittle. So it's structurally very strong, but in terms of being able to take um, shocks, it's uh, not a particularly um, 
malleable metal, so it breaks quite easy when tension is applied. Um, something else I saw on the back of this. So this place altogether probably weighs 50, 60 kilos. And there's a little sticker on there, which in German is um, caution or fragile. So obviously when it came from the factory 120 years ago, uh, it was quite heavy and obviously um, they were very careful not to break it or cause any damage. So I'll take this off to the resource management centre now, now that it's in smaller pieces and uh, ferrous metal is about three cents per kilo so as per usual it's never justifiable to recycle but from the CO2 emissions perspective it's nice to reuse and offset your carbon. So thank you for watching and we'll see you for the next video soon.